So real quick, big O example for y'all. Uh, give the tightest big O estimate of each of the following functions. Justify your estimate, but no formal proof is needed. So you don't have to do the C and K thing for these types of questions. Um, so when we ask you to find the tightest big O estimate, remember that big O is essentially, um, if you have F of N is O of G of N, then that means that F of N does not grow faster than G of N. Uh, so G of N could theoretically be this gigantic, huge function that nothing surpasses, but that's not very practical. So we say tightest big O estimate, which means what is the smallest function G of N such that F of N is O of G of N? And really what that means at the end of the day is big theta, but we just say Titus big O because why not? Um, so um, let's just take a look at this problem then. So if you take a look at A and you expand this, you would have two to the N uh, times N cubed plus N to the N times N cubed plus uh, N to the N, or I should say two to the N times N log N plus n to the n times n log n. Um, so now you may ask, well, how do you find the big O of this? Well, when you consider a big O complexity uh, of a function, let's say like n squared plus 4n plus 4, graphically that would look something like this. Um, and in big O, we really only care about n behavior. And same with really big O, omega and big theta. Um, because that tells us what the function is going to behave like in the really long term as you basically go to like infinity in terms of runtime. So really, we don't care about the 4 or the 4n. We only care about what is going to dominate in the n, which is n squared. So you can disregard smaller terms and also constants because they really don't change much in terms of the end behavior overall. So n squared would be the winner here. So this would be O of n squared. So if you want to apply that same logic to here, we can. So what goes fastest here? Well, according to this handy graph here, which is by the way is not complete, uh, definitely research your big O complexities and what goes faster than others uh, and what is not grows as fast as others. Basically like the different complexities and how they compare in terms of performance. Um, so right off the bat, I can tell that n of the n goes faster than two of the n uh, and they both share n cubed. So this is not it. Um, if you have two to the n, n log n versus n to the n, n log n. Well, again, n, n to the n grows faster than two to the n, so this is not it. And then n log n versus n cubed. Um, n cubed grows faster than n log n. I think it's about here-ish. So n to the n times n cubed would be the uh, winning term here. So it would be O of n to the n, n cubed. Or if you wanted to, you could say uh, O to the n plus three. Uh, and then same thing for B and C, basically. Uh, so if you have G of N, well, this is this would take a pretty long time to expand. So I'm just gonna take a look at this and just determine what the biggest term is. So the biggest term in here is, uh, it appears that that's N to the N times N. And then in this other term, you have N Q plus three N times square root of N times log N. So I believe square root of n grows faster than log n and n cubed grows faster than three to the n. So then you would have, um, oh no, sorry. Three to the n goes faster than n cubed. So you have three to the n and the square root of n. And so which goes faster at the end of the day, I believe that would be, um, n to the n goes faster than three to the n and n goes faster than square root of n. So. Uh, it would be this at the end of the day. So this would be O of n to the n plus one. And then C, uh, again, just take a look at what you have and find the biggest out of the two terms and find the biggest out of that. So you have n to the n, n to the n, that's an automatic winner right there. And then n to the n, n to the n right there. So it's really just O of n to the n to the second, I think, or sorry, O of n to the two n, and then O of n to the two n. So if you add them together, that just ends up being O of n to the two n. So which by the way is an absolute garbage complexity. Like I hope that when you code things, you never have a complexity of O of n at the two end because that might just blow up your computer. So yeah.